Hi, my name is Pete and I'm going to be the host of today's Wrexham.com general election debate. We're here at the Glyndor TV studios. So first of all, our thanks go out to the creative media students and the entire technical team for working their magic and allowing today to actually happen. So as soon as the general election was announced, all local candidates were sent invites to come and take part in this session, where over the next hour, we're going to be debating the political issues that have been dominating the headlines both locally and nationally. So without any further ado, let's meet those who've been able to join us here today, hoping to be your representative for Cluid South. So first up, we have Chris Allen representing Ply Cymru. We have Jamie Edwards representing the Brexit Party. Adams. Edwards. Adams. <laughs> <laughs> Close. Good start. <laughs> uh, we've got Callum Davis representing the Liberal Democrats. Simon Baines, Conservatives and Susan Ellen Jones for Labour. Uh, so thank you all for being here, first of all, and taking time out of your schedules. Uh, we're going to get straight to it. So um, this election was effectively triggered over Brexit. So our first question really is, how important is leave or remain to Cluid South? Uh, we'll start with Chris on the end here. Um, well, I'd better start with how I voted uh, with the referendum, I suppose. So I voted to uh, remain, and I'm still remain. Okay. And uh, it's, I know that Clifford South voted roughly 60-40 uh, in favour of leave, but I, I think that really it's not an option for this area. Um, sorry, sorry. No, it's okay. Would you like no, to expand no, on why no, it's not an option no, for the I'll area? Just let me have a drink of water. Of course, totally. Um, I, don't, I don't think it's an option. Um, Sorry. You don't have to apologize. Sorry. Sorry, can you just move on a second, please? Yeah, then? of course. Uh, so, Jamie, same question, really, more follow-up? Yeah, oh. absolutely. It, it, it is, it's the issue of this election. Mm -hmm. For Cluid South, it's also the issue. Um, I, I've heard the argument that people didn't know what they were voting for. Okay. Which, which will perhaps come out today, and, and, and I think honestly that that is, it, it's a deplorable thing to say. I, I absolutely think the people of Cluid South knew exactly what they were voting for. People are desperate. Um, they, they're, they're scared about the public services. Mm -hmm. They're absolutely terrified about jobs. You know, Cluid South has, has suffered greatly under the, the two main governments of this country. People have seen that as a way of improving their lives, and that has not changed. That has not changed one bit. People okay. want to get out and they want to start improving their lives. And what will those improvements look like? Just to give us a quick view on that, just some of the key improvements. It, well, it means more investment back into Wales, back into Cluid South. Mm -hmm. We're not going to be sending our money back into the EU and having them recycle it and give it us back. <coughs> and I know the argument is, well, you know, the EU funds this, that and the other, but it doesn't. We fund the EU and they give it back. And my argument is, if we probably all have a job here, if your employer said to you, I'm going to pay your wage now to a third party and they're going to tell you what you can spend it on, mm -hmm. you wouldn't be very happy about it. Let's use our money to improve our lives and the people of Cluid South. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Callum, same with you, of course, just to reiterate that, how important is leave or remain for yourself and Cluid um, South? For myself, um, remaining in the European Union is key to the mm -hmm. survival of Wales, and not just Wales, um, it's the United Kingdom. Um, the argument's already been brought up. Yes, we do give a lot to the European Union, but they give a lot back to us, not just financially, but so they give us back the though, support. Do they? We uh, give 12 billion, they don't give 12 billion back. Well, yeah, but they spread that money across the UK. It's about the cooperation. You know, what's well, the point why of do the we need to, Why do we need to cooperate, though, on, on our money? Like, would you, would you cooperate if someone took your money and, and told you how to spend it? If it would benefit me in the long run, or benefit my children and the future, definitely. Okay, so because your children, so would, if, when, if, you, if you've got children or not? No, no, no. So, so if you do have children, wouldn't you prefer to take your money and say, oh, this is how I'm going to spend it for you, rather than go to a third person and have them say, I'm going to tell your children how to spend it? I, I prefer <coughs> that everyone works together and chooses the best way forward for all of humanity, rather than just no, yes. uh, us personally. Yeah, no, no. You know, I think we're very, uh, as a whole country, we keep thinking that we are somehow better than each other. You know, and we are divided anyway, mm. you know. I, I'm a very proud Welshman, but I'm very proud to be British and I'm very proud to be European. And I think it, Brexit is causing more division and, you know, independence talks have gone up. 
from 6% to 28. Uh, 30. Yeah, 30, 30 now. now. And it's going to continue. If we le leave Europe and that money stops coming in and that cooperation stops coming in, Scotland will leave. And then it'll only be a matter of time. And one way or another, either Wales will leave voluntarily mm -hmm. or English nationalism will increase and will be pushed out. Okay. And I think the, bet the, the sooner we realise that it's going to have a negative effect across Wales, the better, and we can move forward from this. Okay, so we each have a chance to jump in as well once we got to the end of the bench, and we'll go back with these opinions. Uh, so, Simon, moving on to yourself. Obviously, Brexit, yeah. key issue. Yes, key issue, the, the dominating issue of the election, although not, not um, by any means all that should be discussed. But given that that's the question at the moment, mm -hmm. um, I voted leave and I'm a strong believer in leaving the EU. And the Conservative Party is uh, has um, going into the election with a deal that's already been prepared. Um, it actually got a majority in Parliament before the election was called. And that deal can be, if there is a Conservative majority after the 12th of December, that deal can be uh, passed through Parliament in terms of legislation and then we'd be out of the EU by the 31st of January and that's what I'm supporting very strongly and what I'm finding on the doorstep having um, spoken to hundreds if not thousands of people here in Cluid South is that of course um, as Chris said this is a constituency that voted 60% leave and people are very angry that the result of the referendum hasn't been um, fulfilled so far and they see us as the party that will deliver it. And that is coming from a lot of um, lifelong Labour voters as well, some of whom I, I find it very mo moving to talk to. Um, they say to me that uh, we would never normally have considered voting Conservative, but on this issue, we feel that the Labour Party has let us down and it's only the Conservative Party that will deliver uh, the results of the referendum, which, as I say, 60% of them voted for. OK, so if we just move on to Susan's answer first, then we'll come back around and we can hear some responses from each of you. So, Susan, Brexit, leave and remain, clear yourself and yourself. I'm going to surprise you a bit, Pete, because I'm actually <laughs> going to agree with half of what Jay said. Because I think he made a very important comment when he said, going around talking to people, you see real worries about jobs and you see real worries about public services. And I think for many of us, the Brexit debate has to be seen in that context. The one thing that genuinely has surprised me in going around, I thought we would see a sort of monolithic remain, a sort of monolithic leave. That's not what you see on the doorstep. What you see is many, many different views. You'll see some people, albeit a minority, saying that they want out of the EU, even if it costs them th their jobs. Now, I don't agree with that view, but you do see that occasionally on the, on the doorstep. You see some people who say they voted leave and have a different view now. You see some young people really, really angry that they've not been given a, a say on it. And you have a whole, whole range of views. And yes, you see also, as I saw recently outside Corwen, some farmers basically saying, if we end up with what Boris Johnson is proposing as his deal, which will ultimately probably lead in 2020 to a no deal, that's our livelihoods down the drain. You see it with that with workers in Airbus as well. So what I think, and I say this as somebody who voted remain in the referendum, but totally respects that diversity of views, is deeply worried at what Boris Johnson is doing. Boris Johnson, incidentally, who voted continually against Theresa May's leave deal. So I won't have, any sancti uh, I won't have anything sanctimonious for any of these Boris Johnson candidates. OK. We see that, and that what we say <coughs> in the Labour Party, let's give that back to the people, including the younger people, who are being shamefully, shamefully let down by Boris Johnson and the Tories. Well, we've obviously got a lot of opinions there from everyone on different sides mm -hmm. of the argument. Uh, we'll come back around this way just to make it fair, so we can all have one chance to come back in. Then I'm sure you'll all be pleased to hear we won't spend <coughs> the rest of this debate on Brexit. <laughs> so um, we'll just come back to Chris there at the end. Uh, we'd like to make some points back to your colleagues here and any of the final points on the Brexit debate, really. Well, yes, on the uh, Boris Johnson's deal it's Theresa Mayles deal repackaged and the only repackage and the only repackaged parts are the parts that are taking out uh, workers rights and human rights that's what's made it acceptable to the ERG that's what's got it through and that is despicable to put people at risk in that way cool Jamie yeah uh, 
I absolutely agree with Susan. I, I think it's you'd be a liar if you were to say, you know, me, me coming from the Brexit party, I've spoke to everyone on their pro Brexit, yeah. or or even you know, the, the the there is extremes of views both ways. Yes, there is. What I will say is, people are they feel let down. They okay. they feel completely let down. Um, and the the. the Boris Johnson's deal, as has been touched on, it's 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 a repackaged, rebranded, horrific, horrible deal that for someone in my position who wants to get out of the EU, it, it really, I, I just don't know what to think about it because, you know, I'd, I'd hate to be put in a position where it was a choice of that deal or remain. Um, but Labour, you've got a choice of remain or remain mm -hmm. with, with Jeremy Corbyn remaining neutral in it. You know, that, that that's just going to confuse people further. And then the Liberal Democrats' view of not being very liberal or very democratic and actually overturning the result of a referendum. We, we can't go back to another referendum. People have voted, OK? It, 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 that's not how democracy works. Yeah, but democracy okay, doesn't well, finish on one day, on a one vote. It develops over time. OK, it, so let me... It can't stop. Well, if we finish, we finished on Liberal Democrats there, I think we could for Callum to weigh in on that Sorry, one. Sorry, can I, can I just, in, just, well, just quickly interject on that, just to, just to highlight one point that I'd just like you to think about. So if we go back to another vote, how far down the line is it then that we start going back to election results that we don't like the sound of? Well, <laughs> you, you, no, you laugh, but no, it's, it's true. totally different. If it's, it's like the Good Friday Agreement, um, I think I think whatever your views are on Brexit, I think the mistake that happened was that the referendum came at a time when there wasn't a real deal or a real proposal mm. on the table. Mm. In the Good Friday Agreement, what happened in Northern Ireland all those years ago is there was a real proposal at the end which people voted for and it didn't go back to Parliament or anything. That is what is being proposed and I appreciate people have different views on it, but I won't have that view misrepresented. Mm. Okay, if we come back to Callum and Simon to finish on Brexit there, we'll uh, add any last minute interjections. Yeah, no, thank you. So, a couple of things. Um, our policy with Revoke Article 50 is if we get a majority in Parliament and we can safely assume that that is a very big mountain to climb mm -hmm. otherwise it is a second referendum and as was mentioned democracy does not end on one vote is our system as a country democratic because if you vote for the wrong party out of the five of us your vote then mm. disappears mm. you know proportional representation, representation is what we support we want everyone to I support to that I support yeah. proportional yeah. representation yeah yeah, yeah. 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 But, but, but how but how do we but and I, I get what you're saying, Callum, honestly, and I appreciate it. And I know, and, and from what I do know about you, you're you a genuine guy, and, yeah. and I know that, and I, and I know you're coming from the right place, but my, my worry is, and, and where I'm coming from, is so many people will feel abandoned and let down. Well, people already feel abandoned across Wales, and that's from a council side and the government. And I think back in when we had the referendum, people were so desperate for change, but weren't being given that change, they need mm. they voted for something that was yes this will make the difference but okay. the information that we all were given was only f fragments okay we just go we haven't heard yeah. from simon back on yeah. this time on this one if you want to come I, to you i think that um the, the problem with what callum's saying is that effectively the liberal democrats have changed their policy halfway through the election um by saying well actually no we we we're not um in any longer uh, against um the uh, EU, we're now talking about having a referendum. So uh, there's a real difficulty with people on the doorstep um, when they come to the Liberal Democrat point of view. But the problem, I think, um, for Susan and the Labour Party is that they have effectively changed their policy on no, that's Brexit. No, simply not true. Because simply not true. when I sat with her here two yeah, years ago... Yeah, I said ago, if the deal was rubbish, I wouldn't vote for it. And I stand by that was my actual word, Simon. Ah, but the other thing that you've introduced into it is a second referendum. I said if the deal was rubbish, I wouldn't vote for it. No, I'll, but... We'll discuss it. The, carry on with well, the point, the, but I'll was, see you in a minute. The, there was never um, a second referendum as part of the Labour policy. And what people feel here, include South, is that the Labour Party has um, went into the last election saying in the manifesto that they would see Brexit through. And then there was a change of mind, particularly Welsh Labour, which has come out strongly in favour of Remain in a second referendum. And, and feel, people feel betrayed because they feel that the Labour Party has changed their point of view. Mm. And that really is the message that comes through so strongly on the doorstep. And that's why so many lifelong Labour voters are turning to us, 
because they see the Conservative Party as the only party that can deliver um, the Brexit after the election. OK, so I think obviously we don't want to spend all of our time on can Brexit, I, but I'm going to say I, if we I, come round this way in? and do a final <laughs> sort of 30 seconds each on our Brexit positions. Can I positions. just come in? Because yeah, yeah, of course. On what Simon was saying. With all respect, Simon, I think we'll leave it to the 55,000 people who uh, the electors in the Cloyd South constituency, not your Tory party uh, script as to what they think on this issue. But what I won't have is a situation. Boris Johnson and all the other MPs have repeatedly been given votes in Parliament. If Boris Johnson and the other leavers have uh, continually voted against Theresa May, if we have seen all that happen, if Boris Johnson's all partners in the DUP will not agree with it because they see his deal as something that will break up the union, mm -hmm. something Callum incidentally spoke about, <laughs> if we see all this, if Boris Johnson and his Tories will not make a, give an economic impact assessment, which in credit to Theresa May she did do on the deal, we have seen that level of change. And I will not in any way advocate a position that I think would affect local people, their jobs and their voice. I won't do it. And no amount of privileged Tory sound bites will, will persuade me to change otherwise on that issue. I can't do it, I'm from here and I won't do it. So I think that's pretty much definitive on Susan's final point there. <coughs> we we'll just have 20 seconds just to wrap up our positions on Brexit there following Susan. I think that'd be good. And we can move on, as you said, to some local issues as well. So. Simon, if you just want to finish up on yeah, Brexit. Well, well, Susan's actually factually inaccurate in one case, which is that Boris Johnson actually did vote. Yes, he did, when he, thought he wanted, when he thought he needed to be Tory but, leader, but the, the twice before he didn't, or okay, in Patterson so, next door, voted against it three times. Please answer me on that. <laughs> well, or I'm just correcting your point that, uh, that Boris... Oh, so he said, only did it twice, not three okay, times, but fine. most of the leavers, including Jacob Lee Smog, did it three times. I thought that actual point, when he, what he did as a, at the last, just to make sure he was Tory leader, was fairly self-evident. Well, I think the other point is that the deal that he's negotiated would, and now commands the majority of the House of Commons, as we saw before the general election, and that included quite a number of Labour MPs. A who small voted number for it. of Labour MPs, and there were more Tory rebels that actually voted against mm. it, most of whom are not being allowed to stand as Tory candidates because the Conservative Party is too extreme to have diversity of opinion. Anymore. Okay, yeah. Callum, if you want to get your final points on Brexit, um, <coughs> if you've got one final thing, you can sum up in 20 seconds. In 20 seconds? Yeah, I know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Three and a half years to 20 seconds, please, yeah. if we could do um, that. But again, the damage it will cause um, and the argument that it's undemocratic to not have a second re referendum is void because yeah. Parliament has voted on it so many times. Mm -hmm. It yeah. is about giving people the choice and people are allowed to change their mind and parties are allowed to change their mind because parties are just like communities. Okay. There cool. Perfect. Jamie? Do you know what? Excellent arguments, Reverend. I'm going to say that. I don't mind. There's good passion from people. It's brilliant to see. I, I think you've probably made up your mind on Brexit already. If this election is about Brexit for you, it stands to reason you need to vote for the Brexit party. Labour, it's Remain versus Remain. Uh, if, if it's the Tories, they can't deliver it. They haven't been able to deliver it. Um, and, and if they would have, they, it would have been done by now. So if this election is about Brexit for you, look at the name, vote for the Brexit party. OK, there we go. And Chris? If it was going to have been done, then Parliament would have got it through. So there's obviously problems with it. You know, we need another impact assessment of the deal that we have now. And whoever came up with Yellowhammer was a genius because they took the name Yellowhammer and used it. And if you know anything about bird watching, you'll know that the Yellowhammer, when it calls, it says a little bit of bread and no cheese. And that's exactly what Brexit will leave us with. OK, there we go. So you're either all going to be relieved or horrified to learn that we're moving on from Brexit now. Uh, we're going to look at a couple more of our local issues, of course. Uh, we're going to go in order. So, Jamie, we'll start with you on this one and we'll come around and finish it yourself, Chris. Uh, so when we're looking at health, so adult social care is one area that local councils have had concern about over funding cuts. Um, what will your party do to protect and improve those services? Social care? Yeah. Yeah, so... The, the, we it, obviously, like I say, if we leave the EU and, and, and we scrap things like HS2, there's this £200 billion pound that gets put in the pot. £12 billion of that goes back into Wales, that's £2 billion extra a year. That's going to go in part into things like social care and the NHS. No one on this panel can deny that the NHS is in dire straits. It needs protecting and it needs looking after. And before anyone comes out and says it, it's not for sale. Nigel Farage has no business to sell it, and if he did, I'd turn my back on the Brexit party. And I've spoken personally to okay. Nigel Farage, and I know it's not for sale, it's for protection. It's saved all of our lives. So, 
yeah, it, 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 where social care, yep. going back to the question. He is on record as having said that the NHS should be looking at an insurance-based system. Well, I mean, I, I don't quite believe that that's the case. It was cut, and, and that's come out recently. It's very convenient. No, that was on TV. I, I, I mean, I spoke to the guy. Years I, ago. I spoke to him yesterday. Personally, met with him. Why would he lie to me? He'd tell me the truth, wouldn't he? And I'm not here. So I'm not a politician, so I could tell. Why would you sell off the NHS to private? I'm th okay, just to quickly get onto that. Think about it. Why would we sell off the NHS to private insurances? Who's going to let that happen? Would you let it happen? You no. wouldn't if you were an American pharmaceutical company. Yeah. You'd okay. Be very happy yeah. with okay, that but so trading. so American pharmaceutical country. Who who do you know in their right mind that's going to go somewhere and pay more for something? I, well, it, if think that about is it. part of a trade deal, I, that, it's, 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 so and who's going to make that, I mean. who's oh, make that trade doing, deal though? What you are going to be dealing with, the monopolistic practices, what you are going to be dealing with, I mean you only have to read the 451 page leaked document from the Department for International Development. You only have to, if you, and if you don't believe any of that, which I would find personally find extraordinary, but if you don't believe any of that, have a look at the links between the Institute of Free Trade, a conservative think tank that actually was lobbying on this, that Boris Johnson spoke at their launch, describing them as a noble think tank on a crucial mission. This is what the right in this country has become. It is a truly terrifying phenomenon, how little regard. Boris Johnson himself, who in Parliament gave a speech again condemning the NHS as a monopoly and monolithic, that really scares me. And I know we, there's, there are many, many issues that we need to discuss about social care and the NHS because they're important. But let's never forget, and I would say this to any moderate Tory or indeed any moderate across the political spectrum, it's not the same anymore. We're dealing with people who genuinely want a privatised NHS and they've got their little mates in the States with Donald Trump who are, they're able to work with on it. I mean, let's okay, face well, it. Okay, well, let's just see all the party's positions on that and then we can move on to those debates, I think. So. <coughs> Callum, your party, social care, what they do to both improve and protect that. Just going back to a previous point that was brought up, that who would pay more for the NHS? Mm -hmm. The NHS is like anything um, that you buy. If you go into retail, if you think that you're getting more for your money and if you have to pay a little bit more, you think you're getting that quality. It was shown in an investigation in America that Canadians um, who needed heart surgery would fly down to Florida to pay more mm -hmm for surgery just because they thought they were getting more. But in Canada, they have some of the best scientists and best doctors for heart surgery. Yeah, but, who, but who's going to let that happen? Like, I, I, even in the Brexit party, and I meet Brexit party supporters, who? What, what I'm saying, I, I get I, where I you're coming from, this worry. my left. The Conservatives I, will Simon, conserve. do you want to sell off the No, not personally, absolutely not. not personally. I, I mean, I was, I, I was waiting for my, my turn well, to yeah, speak, well, listening Simon. to the others. Um, uh, which is what we should be doing in, on this panel. But we have absolutely no plans whatsoever to sell off the NHS. We've made that abundantly clear. People like myself um, would be horrified if that ever happened. Have you met anyone this time in the Conservative Party who wants to sell it? No, off? not at all. When and actually, can, just to come back on what Susan was saying, the document, the leaked document, doesn't even mention selling off the NHS. So it's and it's been in the public domain for about two months anyway. So all that Jeremy Corbyn was doing was holding up uh, effectively some pieces of paper that related to an issue which was not actually selling off the NHS. And so that's one way of campaigning. Um, you know, if, if Susan approves of that way of campaigning, then so be it. <coughs> but it's not the way that we want to campaign. We want to actually talk about what what policies actually are and our policy is to put a great deal more money into the NHS so Wales will receive 1.2 billion pounds that's already been agreed and that's flowing through and then when we come to discuss the whole issue of social care and the NHS it's worth reminding ourselves that it's the Labour Party that runs that in Wales and the Labour Party in Wales has actually led to a situation where it's the only party in the UK that has cut expenditure on the health service, which happened between 2011 and 2013. And secondly, if you look at the increase in health expenditure in, in England, it's risen over that period by 23% and it's risen by only 17% here in Wales. And I find it mind boggling that the Labour Party, the Welsh Labour Party, could have actually cut expenditure on the NHS. They, okay, they so we'll come back to yourself in a second, Callum. I'm just going to let Chris I, weigh in on this, since he I, hasn't spoken oh, on this sorry. issue yet, I, and then we'll come back yeah, to everyone's... Okay. I haven't, I haven't spoken on this issue. 
I just haven't heard from Chris at all right. yet, so and then no, we'll Chris come back round. Yeah, uh, I'd, ju I'd just like to ask Simon. Uh, the Prime Minister has said there'll be a £150 billion Brexit bonus. And uh, as far as I can see, there's only one thing in the whole of the UK that is worth that kind of money, and that is the NHS. What do you think about that? Well, the, the, the Brexit bonus has to be um, spent on a lot of different services. Brexit but the, over, the overall um, expenditure that's going into the NHS, um, which has been announced by the government, additional expenditure is £33 billion. Pounds. I'm talking about the first chunk of that, which is £1.2 billion, which is coming to the Welsh Government now as part of a £6 billion package, which he announced in the summer. And we accept, we fully accept as the Conservative Party that the, our public services need more investment. So that's why we're putting that money into Welsh um, Health Service, a similar amount of money into education as well. These services need more money. Yeah, but where is it going to come from? Okay, so if we just hear from Susan on, just going to go back yeah. to the question, so we all remember about what your party yeah. will actually do to both improve yeah. and protect these services. So, Susan from Labour. Yeah, I, what I want to take, first of all, is some of this nonsense on the supposed investment that is coming from the Tories in NHS. If you look at the figures on the health and social care, it's £290 per person more in Wales than it is in England. So I won't have any of that nonsense from Simon or anyone else. We know quite clearly the amount of money that has been cut from the UK government to Welsh, government's, uh, Welsh government budget over £1.4 billion pounds now and in Wrexham Council alone has had to deal with cuts of 65 million pounds over the last 10 years. So I won't have any of this nonsense from Simon. Do so you think it's a Labour government or a Tory government though, Susan? Coming from Westminster. No, but it yeah. came from Cardiff, that decision. You yeah, are that, talking that, about... It was your, we'll your government to Cardiff about, which cut the money You to are talking about it in the context of a more than £1.4 billion pounds cut fr from UK government into to Welsh government. And that is what you're talking about it into. And we know what... And we know... Uh, we've seen Institute for fin Fiscal Studies said only yesterday that actually in terms of council tax rises, that's more likely under the Tories than any other party. But let me turn to this issue. We need more investment in our NHS. We can see it. We need more investment in social care. We need more support for women born in the 1950s who deserve their pensions. And we need that in the round and we, meet, we need to consider. I also think personally in North Wales, the jury needs to be out on whether Betsy Cadwallader as one trust is the best way of serving. So I don't think it is. I was in an uh, accident and emergency with my father l in the spring and you could see, you could see there that uh, people having, having to wait for too long. But the way we deal with that is investment. The way we deal with that is working with NHS staff. And the way we deal with that is imaginative responses in social care and better funding because this lot have cost have cut and cut in communities like ours it's damaging our communities first thing we need is investment okay so if we come back around this way if we go from chris and we'll all try and make a final point on this one before we get into the next so yeah yeah but susan back. labor's been in power in the senate for 20 years mm. and the responsibility for the nhs in wales lies with welsh labor mm. welsh labor how are we in this state? I know we don't get enough from Westminster, yeah. but how can you justify the downward pressure that we're feeling? I, this is why, I mean, this is why I think we need imaginative solution. I mean, sometimes we've been in government on our own, sometimes with Plaid, sometimes with the Lib Dems. And by the way, I happen to think that sort of consensual working mm. is a good, is a good mm. thing, but ultimately it comes down to funding cuts from Westminster. And I think it's important that we know where that comes. This is a government. I mean, Chris Grayling alone in the UK government um, squandered £2.7 billion pounds of public money, and he was still left in post. This is a government that squanders money left, right, and centre, the Tory, the Tory government. This is a government that won't even cost its economic plans on Brexit. But why did and yet you cut, they will not... Why did you cut expenditure on the health service in Wales? I've already said that in, in Wales, £290 per person extra than in England. We're looking at it imaginatively, and we have to look again, I think, at the health trust in North Wales. But what I won't have is from a party that has cut and cut into Wales, a party which across the border in England had managed its first junior doctor strike. There'd never been one before, Simon. I don't believe 
that your party is committed to the NHS, and I certainly don't believe you're committed to investment in public services and communities like ours. It's like what it's like when you talk about the police. You talk about extra police. Do you know what? You're talking about extra police. That'll be less than the police that you cut. I really will not believe a word from you. So this is the party. Try and stay on the social care issue for now. Rather than move on to those. Do you remember 350 remember million a week? For the NHS, that was Boris Johnson, that was Simon Baines, that was their Tory friends. I don't believe a word they're saying on this, and I don't believe they care about our NHS or our public services and social care. Okay, so I'm thinking Simon's going to want a minute to think about response there. We keep trying to go yeah. around this way, and <laughs> yeah. we'll get to you. So, Jamie, just on yeah. final point on your party, protecting, improving. Yeah, I mean, it, it, I, I've said what the investment will be, and we've heard it from, from both from Susan and Simon here. The, the, they seem to somewhere between both their parties lies the blame of why the NHS is failing. Susan and Simon have both made very good arguments to why it's not their party. Fact to fact, though, it is one of their parties that's to blame. So maybe that's if it's <coughs> social care that's your issue, then you, the answer is they're probably neither their parties is the one to vote for, is it? OK. Callum? Um, if I can just make several can make, points. Yeah, yeah. Several uh, in several again. If we can... Yeah, 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 totally. Um, <laughs> I, I We're getting to, this. I have to defend <laughs> Welsh Labour. Um, you know, we are in government with them in Wales. We don't get enough funding from Westminster. Mm -hmm. um, they are doing the best they can um, in Wales. You know, you can see in Aspetti Gwyneth, uh, which is my nearest hospital, mm. um, they are struggling. They haven't beds. My uncle had to lie on a bed uh, with double pneumonia. But it's not the government's fault. It's funds not being there to help. Um, and that's, and I have to agree, but Betsy Corolba might not be the best umbrella to be using um, and you know a lot the funds that are given to Wales have to be distributed to education which is fantastic here in Wales um, and transport we have a lot of staying on health we have a lot of retirees coming into Wales because it is more peaceful so we have to not burden that's the wrong word but we have to care for everyone that is over the age of 60 and we give those free prescriptions in Wales if you live here and we do look after you and yep. you know we, as the Lib Dems we want to fund more people fund Wales to help you know and if okay. we did who's best yeah. to decide though the Lib Dems or the Labour who, who who's best to redistribute that money I, again uh, as Susan said cooperation so not I, the I, EU the EU helps the entire of the UK with financial support. But we're going with cooperation yeah, yourself cooperation. there. No, I think that's fairly clear. Uh, Simon, yourself, there are a lot of points made, obviously. Yeah. A few things you want to respond I, I, to. Again, if we take a big yes. issue and squash it down. I will, <laughs> I will do my best. Um, the first point I'd, I'd like to make is that the people working in the health service do a fantastic job. Mm. And whatever we're arguing about here, none of us um, doubts that for one minute. And in fact, we're all thoroughly in agreement. The junior doctors do. in England who've been on strike under your government, I think, might disagree with you I, about uh, I your was assessment talking about, of the government. I was talking about Wales, You Susan. would be. So I think we can all agree that um, the Welsh um, <laughs> NHS is, is the people working in it do a fantastic yeah, job. The, the second point um, on the NHS overall is that four out of seven of the hospital trusts um, are in, in special measures at the moment. And at some stage in this argument, the Welsh Labour Party actually has to look in the mirror and say, could we do things better? And Susan seems to be suggesting that that might well be the case um, with the North Wales Health Board. Yeah. But moving on to social care, that obviously is very much interlinked with um, local government as well. And just going back to so the point... Try and make your final point on this yeah, one for us. Going back to that, we, the, the, the government in London has given extra money to Wales to ensure that there are decent settlements More for local government. More than 1.5 billion in uh, So, Susan, if I can just... You, you've had plenty of opportunity All to right, speak. All right, carry on. Okay? So You'll get one more. 550 <laughs> million pounds, and of that money, the Welsh government decided to only spend about 400 million. So that's what's really put a downward pressure. And so Wrexham, I'm just hoping that on the, the 16th of December, when we get the settlements from Cardiff to the local government, that we will move from a situation where the Labour authorities in South Wales there, are very well looked after and we are not well looked after in North Wales. So I hope that changes because that will have a major impact on um, social care as well. OK, and I'm sure Susan might have one point to finish on there. Yeah, I think, I mean, one thing Simon hasn't brought up in this debate, to be fair, he does have a background in local government, and that is 
in the county of Powys, so where he was mayor until uh, October. So he, d he does have that perspective, um, in fairness, from representing um, a different part of Wales where he's from. But I think for people round here in Wrexham County, they will see the fact that Westminster cuts have ultimately meant that in the last 10 years, £65 million has been wiped off the budget and people are struggling around here. We need proper investment in our local communities. But I, I know that most people who live in our local area and are from here would agree with me on that. Okay, perfect. I think we are going to move on to now. We've got a few things to get through here. So mm -hmm. I think we've all made some <laughs> good points. And we're not calling it arguments, we're debating. Remember we're debating. that, guys, <laughs> debating. Uh, so we're actually going to start with yourself this time, Callum. Okay. Uh, we're going to be talking about your analysis of the local economy at the moment mm -hmm. and what non-Brexit policy do you think will have the biggest impact to improve that? Um, so my background is all retail. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the biggest community issues is high streets disappearing yeah. and dying out. Mm. Um, I mentioned in a similar interview um, how I adore Butchers, local butchers, okay. um, and you can see the, my the, suit the doesn't food or the people. Like. <laughs> a bit of both, um, and they just keep disappearing. Not only just here, but across Wales. Um, and going into the retail side, it's getting rid of or lowering the business tariffs and yeah. taxes mm. because okay. I, I spent a sm short time in a small store um, that was on a high street that was already in financial dire, and they were paying ridiculous amounts of rent just for the uh, building that was falling apart mm -hmm. and we were having to push sales again and again and again just to <laughs> make the quota to make sure that so we could stay in the building. would you want to change that then? What would be uh, your... The, the Lib Dems, we want to reduce or get rid of the tariffs, you know, okay. um, to help local businesses in, uh, prosper um, and increase. You know, online affects that as well um, and part of my personal uh, view is to help educate people um, when you go into a retail shop and then you can't find what you want you'll just go oh, I'll go online and order from that same shop okay you're having that negative effect on locals that local store cool um, and it's I think overall it's lowering people. an education yes cool basically. okay Simon yes I, I I grew up in the hotel business my father used to run Lake Fernley Hotel so for me tourism and hospitality industry is really important and obviously it's a very important part of Cluid South and I hope very much that the Labour Party won't um, go back to their idea of a tourism tax which is one of the ideas that they floated in Cardiff because we need to do everything we can to support our tourism industries which provide good work for people here and attract visitors in <clears throat> so that would be my first thing um, secondly <clears throat> rather picking up on what Callum's saying um, the, it, it's very important to make sure that we lower or uh, indeed abolish for smaller businesses business rates and this is something that the uh, Labour government of Cardiff has been very slow to react to but that would have a major impact on businesses um, across the, the high streets and as he rightly says we need to make sure that our high streets have the best opportunity to prosper and then the other area, okay, which so we've got agreement there on lowering yep, then. That's absolutely. good. We'll just move around everyone, then we'll come back sure, to our second sure, point. Sure. So we've got the one point there. So yep. Susan, yourself, again, your analysis of the current yeah. situation and then I, a non-Brexit I mean, policy. Yeah, I'm going to be quite sympathetic really to many of the points that the other two have just raised um, on this. Because I think one of the big things about the Clwyd South constituency, it's not, you know, it's not one community, it's lots of communities, lots mm. of villages, lots mm. of towns. And the high street is really really important um, to that so I think support for those shops support for those businesses mm. on the high street um, is fine and the more investment that actually comes in the more we can actually support these uh, small businesses that, and medium-sized businesses that are the lifeblood of our towns and villages but I would also like to see as well um, more more tax support for social enterprises and community groups we've got some fantastic um, examples like the Plasmatic uh, Leisure Centre, like Canal Van Nee, South Denbyshire Community Partnership, that, that has won some big awards, both of which have won some big awards in the past year, and many, many examples. I'd like to see the tax system improved. It's something I've actually debated and campaigned for in Parliament, so that we can actually have more social enterprises and more know-how and more support so that in our different villages 
and towns, we can do more to develop groups like okay. this and set them up. Perfect. Cool. Moving on to yourself, Chris. Well, this is fabulous. We're all in some, <laughs> we're all in some sort of agreement. If we can just cut these can, five minutes. Yeah. Be, <laughs> we're all in some sort of agreement that we can do more. It's fantastic. Mm -hmm. And that's the sort of cooperation that we really do need. You know, we need to sit down and we need to make, try and find a way of making things better, whether that be through incentives or through uh, taxation. That's great. Do so you yeah. agree on those policies then? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Wow, that was easy. Are you going to rock the boat? Do you know what? No, really I'm going to echo what Chris has said. Isn't it fantastic that we all do agree on something and that there is actually a care in the community? And, I, and to sort of touch on what Callum and, and Simon and, and Susan have said, we're committed to, to getting rid of business rates on small businesses. Maybe look at putting a small sales tax on online uh, companies mm -hmm. to encourage idea. people Good to idea. shop in the high streets. So uh, let's leave it there. Something okay. that we agree on. Uh, no, <laughs> perfect. That means we can move on to our next That's topic great. and we'll <laughs> see how long this harmony <laughs> lasts. Uh, so, Simon, we're going to start with you this mm -hmm. time, of course. And um, obviously, you've all been out and around over the last few weeks canvassing mm -hmm. and before that. And obviously, even though it is 2019, homelessness is still a huge mm -hmm. issue for us across the country and locally. Um, so what would you like to see done to support people and how would you actually bring that about yourself as an MP with the homelessness situation? Well, I, th I think the, the, the first policy would be to make sure that um, empty homes are actually used. And I think we've all spent um, many hours knocking on doors around the constituency and you do see there are empty homes and obviously there'll be a story behind that. But there's um, considerable capacity um, to Im improve the, the situation with homelessness for, uh, by, by that method. A second way, obviously, is to ensure that we build as many houses as possible. I'm, I'm very pleased that the Conservative government announced uh, that it wanted um, councils to go back to building houses. I think council house building is a very good way of solving homelessness and uh, the difficulty of people to actually get their own home, whether it be rented um, or otherwise. So I think that's a very important policy. And we would that are be your main one you'd focus on, the building, or would it be using the empty homes? If you well, were to pick it, one it, of those. It would be, I think the empty homes is an important first step. Yep. Um, and then the building more homes. I mean, at the moment, there's 220,000 um, new homes being built across the UK every cool. year, but we need to get that higher and higher. Perfect. Um, so those, those are two, two aspects yeah, to the Yeah, we'll see situation. if this lovely uh, harmony between all of you lasts then. So, <laughs> Susan, moving on to yourself. The homeless situation at the moment, if you were the MP, what would you be personally wanting to do oh, to I think new, that? new homes, new affordable homes, new council homes is important, um, which is why I totally agree with um, what some people thought was the controversial stance of the Welsh Labour government on the right to buy, because I think we actually have to put housing need um, first on this issue. But before I was an MP, actually, I worked um, writing funding bids and the like for two housing and homelessness charities. So th this is an issue I think it is really important. And I, I also think as well as, and this is where I think we've seen the problems with universal credit, the awful five week uh, waits that, are, that have led to homelessness and has led to debt. And I think you know it's important what the Labour Party is saying is how we need to scrap that expensive and failing system. But when we're talking about more investment for social care and more support, we are talking about more personal um, support for people who do become homelessness, homeless. And I like some of the ideas that are found, um, I say as I've got a charity background, in the voluntary sector of, um, the, of the fire movement, where people who are homeless are provided with housing and also brought, you know, um, trained up into employment. Obviously, it's, um, homelessness is a different d different situation for many people. So it'd but be I the think training you'd want to focus on? Yes, as well. I mean, obviously, I mean, th you know, there are uh, plenty of people who are homeless for whom that is not an issue. But where that is relevant, I think there's got to be that support. And there is good, okay. there's good support here in the voluntary <laughs> sector and growing in the Wrexham area. But that needs, that doesn't mean that uh, the statutory sector, um, it, shouldn't be supporting it and there needs to be investment as well as of course in house building. Okay, cool. So Chris, we can hear from you on that well, same issue. Yeah, I agree. The statutory sector should do far more mm. and we do need to get back to building uh, uh, affordable homes and council houses again. And uh, 
homelessness, where we're at, is the result really, and let's face it, let's be honest, it's 40 years of tax cutting. We can't afford to do the things that we want to do because our individual tax burden has been reduced. That's really the root of the problem. And we've got, we can't afford to do the things that we need to do. That's the issue. We'd all like to, we all say we'd like to help people, but we're not getting enough into the pot to actually factually do it. And it is, it is. So finding alternative funding it's would fine, be your... It, it's fine alternative funding, whether that comes from saying, so, okay, like the Lib Dems have got a policy of we'll put a penny on income tax, right? That, that's absolutely fine because it'll be spent in the right way. If you keep aggressively cutting taxes for people, then there won't be any money to put back in society and society just keeps fracturing and fracturing. Okay, okay Jamie, do you want to weigh in on this? Yeah, I think it, it is such a difficult subject, isn't it? It's because there's so many reasons why people become homeless and why they stay homeless. Absolutely, I think you need, there needs to be reform to the universal credit. We need to rebuild the housing system. But then I think if you look at more investment into things like the NHS, so you can help people deal with addiction, investment into small businesses to get people jobs, you'll actually find the root cause of why people are homeless, try and prevent that, and then also help people that are homeless currently give them an option somewhere to get them off the streets. Okay, and Callum, come into yourself. Yeah, you should have made this a three hour session. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if you want to stay here for three hours. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, <laughs> um, debate yourself. Homelessness yeah. is a complicated issue because there's so many, I, I think all, all of it is complicated because there's so many branches because you could move on from talking about homelessness mm -hmm. to housing to then who's going to build the houses um, because we have a tradesman issue where we aren't training enough. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that's a big issue as well. I think... So if you had to focus on one? If I had to focus on one... I would go MP, you can go do it, what's the one? Um, to tackle all of it, it would be training. Okay. It would be training um, the industry to help build those houses. The 1p on income tax would help support that as well and get people off the streets because it's not safe, you know, it's upsetting. Um, I found out yesterday in work that... Um, a homeless man, a, a person had s slapped in a bin and then was fatally injured in a in a skip because he was sleeping in it and it mm. was behind. So now our policy in work is every night, not just close the back door, but we have to go and check mm. and make sure mm. that there's nobody. Okay. And, you know, yes, we're all mm. pretty on agreement, mm. I think, mm. on that one. This yeah. is amazing. Let's Can uh, I just add one thing? To yeah, I, one super quick thing. Well, super quick thing. Move on. I do agree that it, that it is, as Jamie said, it's the it's all sorts of different things that lead to it mm -hmm. um, and so it's not just building the houses and so on but it's also trying to ensure addiction he mentioned I came across somebody recently who's become a homeless um, locally because of addiction so okay. it's the whole um, range of different yeah. services mm -hmm. that we like need to we've got training health. overall yeah. I think is that mental one health for a lot is of massive one, like absolutely yeah. Yeah. very big issue we're going to see if we can keep you all together uh, holding hands <laughs> and singing songs <laughs> uh, so Susan we're going to be starting with you on this one here so we're going to be talking about leadership mm -hmm. uh, so why do you personally believe in your party leader <coughs> And are they the person the people of Cleared South should look up to as a role model? Oh, I want them to look up to me. I mean, I'm, uh, <laughs> you know, I'm, uh, I'm like most other true North Walians. I think we're pretty independent-minded in our um, communities. And I think one of the great things, actually, about the Labour movement and the Labour tradition is we've always been a very, very diverse party. It's not like the Tory party now under... Boris Johnson, where they all have to sign up and they all have to agree on everything or they don't get selected, so you've got really bright, really talented people. You believe in Jeremy Corbyn, people. Susan? I believe in the Labour Party. Do you get really talented? You voted really against him, didn't you? Right. I, I did, I'm a moderate, you know. But in I'll the leadership what, election. Yeah, and what did you, you must have voted for Boris Johnson or you I wouldn't did. be sitting here as a yes, candidate. You see, this is yeah. the well, we'll all find out what we <laughs> think about our parties. But what I, think is, what I think is important in this election is that we we come together on the issues we look at investment and the fact that you the fact that you've got someone like me who voted for a different leadership uh, candidate just shows what a broad base we are in the labor party but at election time we come together on the issues we come together in terms of investment in our communities and you can bet your bottom dollar that if the labor party 
is in government in any sense, whether on our own or whether indeed, um, I, whether indeed leading in a hung parliament, that what we will be doing is we will be coming together on the big issues and not on the, pers on, not on the personalities, because I think that's in our tradition. And I think that's okay. what matters to people in our communities. Got that. So we'll come over to Chris on that okay. one. So you're a leader and a role model for Fluid South. <laughs> oh, we're, we're extremely blessed, implied, uh, at our last leadership election to have had three uh, fantastic candidates in Rain, Leanne and Adam. Uh, selecting Adam was a great idea. Absolutely fantastic. He's a man of passion. He loves... He loves Wales, he loves the people of Wales. He was an MP, stepped away, went to Harvard Business School, he's come back and he's a fantastic AM. So you definitely believe? Yes, absolutely. We're going to move fantastic. this one on quite quickly, but Jamie, come to yourself, your leader, role model for Clued South, why should they look up? I, I mean, I absolutely believe in Nigel Farage, yeah, I do. And, and he's a role model for Clued South because we're, we're a vote leave constituency and, and, he's, and he's completely committed to that. It's That's why you that. believe in him. Yeah. Cool. Callum, yourself? Sorry, it was just finished off listening. Um, <laughs> That's good. Just, listening's good. Yeah, listening's good. Responding's also um, good. <laughs> I, I, I really like Jo. Um, I spoke to, I've only spoken to her briefly on the phone. Um, she seems very nice, lovely, and um, a lot of people don't tend to like her for the oddest of reasons why her voice is a bit squeaky. But mm -hmm. Margaret Thatcher's voice was initially squeaky, you know, and... Um, <laughs> You know, You're I, saying I Joe Simpson won't have a squeaky voice by the end of all this. She, she might not. No. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you say things like this about men, no, you do this. No. So I think that's a yeah. point you might want to. Yeah, gosh, yeah. yeah, but you do personally believe in her. I, 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 I do. I, I really like her, you know, and I think she's giving a lot of support in Wales, as, and that's shown by Unite to Remain okay. across Wales, um, with that cooperation between Greens, Labour, and uh, cool. Greens, and um, Pride, and. So far, love for our leaders. We'll finish with Simon on this one, and then we're going to go to a final question. Oh, he's question. got to. Oh, he wouldn't be. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't so, yeah, pressure seat. Like. Pressure seat. Uh, your leader, do you They'll believe be your party leader? And, uh, <laughs> why should Clued South look up to him as a role model? Well, of Dominic course. Dominic Cummings is watching of them. Course, of course, Boris Johnson does have a particular link with this constituency. Yeah, he lost having it. Having stood here in 1997. And um, ever since then, he's um, <clears throat> continued to take a great interest and kept in touch with a lot of people. I mean, I, I, I have to say that on the doorstep, um, people prefer Boris um, to Jeremy, that's for sure. And uh, the same is in the opinion polls as well. And I think the reason they do is because they feel that Boris Johnson is um, a man of action, um, that he's got an idea where he wants to take the country forward. And you agree with that? Obviously and that's why you're... I, I, yes, absolutely. I think cool. that he... Um, he, the other point about Boris is that he makes people smile. He's a little okay. bit quirky, and I think people rather like That's that That's fine. We've well. got man of action, yeah. we've got I quirks yeah. and smiles. We are going to move on to our final questions. We are a bit pressed say, for time, I guys. I have to say, that's not I'm the sure you, you want get to go too home. often in Ross, Kevin, or... Oh, you don't want to. It, 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 it is. The rest of us want to go But he's got to say it, or he wouldn't be here. OK, we're going to do one more question. Well, two more, actually, and then we're all going to leave and Callum's going to stay, apparently, so we'll see how this goes. So we'll come back to yourself, Chris, and we'll come round on this one. So uh, Monday, the 23rd of March, will be 100 days after the election. Mm -hmm. So what is the most solid and tangible thing that you will deliver for the people in your constituency by that date? If we try and keep it to one thing. Hopefully, I will be part of a block of Plaid MPs. Um, a good, solid block so that we can have a decent voice in Parliament in the same way that the SNP have managed to get a decent voice that is holding the balance of power okay. in Scotland. Okay, Jamie, yourself, as brief as we can just be, obviously. Just repeat the question again. Sorry. So, 100 days after the election, right. okay. on the 23rd of March, what is the most solid and tangible thing that you can deliver for the people of your constituency? Yes, well, I'd be a liar if I sat here and said I could guarantee we're going to deliver anything because it will be whatever the outcome of the election is. <laughs> if it goes the way that we hope it's going to go, we will deliver Brexit. OK, simple as that. Deliver Brexit. Callum? The opposite. The opposite? <laughs> oh, we're, we're, back to, we're back to not being friends anymore. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's simple as. OK, it's that's yours. Prevent, prevent Brexit and... Prevent spread, breakfast. Prevent Don't Brexit. prevent brex I'm breakfast. Sorry, I am the dog. <laughs> OK, <laughs> so you do yeah. want to go for that. Yeah. Yours prevent. <laughs> Perfect. Prevent. Simon? Yes, um, we, we will achieve Brexit. We have the plan. Um, so the legislation will be before through Parliament by Christmas and then we would have left the EU by the end of January. 
that's clearly stated. And when Susan makes the point about signing up to things, I'm very proud that I'm one of 635 conservative proud. candidates who has signed up to voting for his deal. And I'm very delivering. proud about that. And so it will be delivered um, by the end of January. Perfect. So that would be the yep. main thing delivering. 100 days later. Simon Susan. seems to be proud of something that the DUPs think will break up uh, the UK, by the way. In terms of 100 days, the thing I think I would like to see as a priority is justice for the women who were born in the 1950s, whom the, the Tory government has constantly opposed. In contrast, to be fair, to backbenchers of all parties, we're committed to that. And I think it's only fair justice in terms of pensions for the women in the, born in the 1950s, that's the first thing I'd like to see. Okay. We haven't opposed it. Everyone, yes, though. you have. We haven't opposed it. Yes, We've actually have. said that we're going to um, have an inquiry ah. as to how we can um, deal with the issue. So, well, which, is different, which is different to your it's commitment, which is uncosted. Let me, why have you therefore, the government has, has refused to listen. There is a large um, cross-party, all-party parliamentary group on state pension inequality that is co-chaired by a former Conservative minister. We have come together with proposals. The government could have accepted so, those. Susan, I'm just going to jump inside. Yeah, okay. I think our last question will probably maybe lead you down this route, <laughs> potentially. <laughs> we might to. find I a way to answer to. this in our final one. Um, so, and we're going to be starting with yourself, Jamie, on this one. So, a lot of debates often end up with something quite soft, uh, but we're going with this. So to any voters out there who are on the fence, who should they absolutely, certainly not vote for out of your competitors and why? Labour. Um, and it, and, and we will keep it brief as possible. Yeah, it's just as brief as possible. I, I don't think no one on this panel disagree that Susan is a passionate and committed candidate. And, and, and I have a lot of admiration for you, Susan, I really do. But ultimately, a vote for Susan will put Jeremy Corbyn in number 10. He has a shocking history um, that it, it, it frightens me and, you, and I mean it from the bottom of my heart the thought of him being a number 10 it, 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 it does okay. scare me so yeah. Labour Jeremy Corbyn cool Callum um, <clears throat> I, I'd have to pick Conservatives okay unfortunately I, I just I respect everyone on this panel as a person and mm -hmm. I respect your beliefs but it, I, I feel that we may have had enough of a Conservative government and the damage that could potentially happen now after this okay. election. Simon? Well, likewise, I respect Susan, and I actually respect her for standing up uh, to Jeremy Corbyn. Which I'm you just, would never do against Boris Johnson. I'm just rather so. sad that she didn't um, really carry it through. Um, and I imagine that for Susan, this is a very uncomfortable election with <laughs> so a leader of which Labour. she disapproves. <laughs> yes, certainly. Yeah. Okay. Susan? I'm really not taking any of this uh, nonsense from Simon. It won't, it won't surprise anybody that it is the Conservatives um, that I, I would least like. Yes, yes, I, for a number of reasons, because everyone <laughs> knows this seat is essentially a two-horse race between myself, who is from this constituency, lives here and is invested in this constituency. And Simon, I actually quite like Simon personally, but I have no doubt on the, in terms of the politics, he's one of Boris Johnson's uh, straw men. He is, um, until October, he was the mayor of a town in Powys. He's now renting a little place in the grounds of Chircastle. It's nice in Chircastle and I don't blame him. But the idea that he would put our area before, um, bef before his um, right-wing Tory party masters, okay. I don't believe I could never vote for Simon in the seat and I could Clear never answer, vote for the I cutting think. Tories. And last but not least, uh, <laughs> got all your colleagues to pick from. So. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Simon, it's got to be the Conservative. Hey, if we just give a brief why on that one? It has to be, and it's mostly because and it's no disrespect to you. I, li I like you as an oh. individual, I really do. But you are there purely to go through the division how you're told. Yeah. Okay. And that's it. Sorry. Okay. No, that's perfect. That brings us to the end of our main questions. Uh, so we just want to say thank you to all of you for taking part tonight in this election. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have invited all the candidates to give a very and quick final message to everyone watching. Uh, we're going to start with yourself, Callum. So if you do around a 20 second, 30 second, a final message, what you need to say? Um, I think my main message would be no matter what party that you're supporting, um, just always remember to go out and vote. I think it's our right as citizens of the United Kingdom to vote. And yeah, best of luck on the okay. day. 
Simon? Oh, well, let's get Brexit done. That's my main message. And the <laughs> Conservative Party will deliver on that. And then we can move on to um, uh, making sure that the public services have much more investment in them, particularly the NHS education and the police services. So there's a bright future out, out there for us. And I think a lot of people feel very, very frustrated and want to get Brexit done. And we will certainly deliver that. OK, Susan? In this constituency, there's a very, very clear choice in this election, and that's between myself, who is from this constituency, who is rooted in this constituency, who believes passionately in investment in this constituency, and the Tory party candidate, who's already, incidentally, has, has spent this whole time not a word of disagreement with Boris Johnson's extreme right-wing agenda. That, I think, is the choice facing local residents of Etligabethland and Govenamech Playlice, I ask for your support in what is undoubtedly a two-horse race here in Clwyd South. Okay, Chris. <laughs> uh, if, like me, you believe in Wales, you believe in the people of Wales, then vote Plaid Cymru, the party of Wales. All right, and finally, Jamie. Um, Susan's touched on it a couple of times, saying it's a two-horse race, and that's a shame. It's absolutely not a two-horse race not by any stretch of the imagination. This election is the election of a generation. Whatever your issues are, whether that's Brexit or reform to the political party, you do have more choices than the Conservatives who've never won this seat or Labour who've let you down. Vote with your heart and that is, you, won't, you won't go wrong, but do not for one minute believe that your vote won't count if you don't vote for one of the two political parties who have a history of letting you down. OK, so thank you very much to all of our candidates who've taken time to be with us here this evening and answer our questions. Thank you to everyone who's watching this. Hopefully it's helped you make an informed decision on how you are going to vote. If you want more, uh, all of our candidates have done Q&As, which you can check out on Wrexham.com forward slash election 2019, uh, where they've all had a one-on-one -on -one grilling. So obviously, <laughs> election day is on the 12th, so make sure you and everyone you know goes out to vote. Please also tune in on the evening of December 12th to discover who is your next MP. Thanks again to Wrexham Glyndor University students and all the team who've helped out today and have generously facilitated democracy in Wrexham. So thank you for watching. Good evening. <laughs>